Join the Yoga Traveler membership where you will have access to the entire video library, over 80 videos and 200 plus hours of content to enjoy. www.yogatraveler.online slash membership. Welcome. Let's enjoy a Pitta balancing yoga class together today. So there are three dosha um, energies in, in that we'll, we'll be exploring, but this one is Pitta balancing and it is related to the fire element. So we'll feel as we practice today, some heating up of our center of our body with twists and with some energetic vinyasa and some difficult poses that you're welcome to move into if you'd like. Pitta is often related to um, uh, competitiveness, which we try to avoid in yoga. It's not about being competitive. So let's harness that energy and put it into a focus on alignment and precision within our poses so that we can get the very best benefit out of the poses um, for ourselves. And then of course, we'll have a balance today as well. So we'll have that other side where we really value the relax and the rest of the practice, the resting of the practice. So you'll feel both today. Whatever we do though, we always begin with our breath. So let's close our eyes, roll our shoulders back nice and tall through the back, tuck your chin just a little bit, just to lengthen the back of the neck. And let's breathe Ujjayi breath in and out of the nose. So this breath is what's going to start to build that warmth inside fire up our center, really get that focus in on the heat that we build from the inside. And then as we move, building that heat on the outside as well. So allow your breath to be deep, allow it to be focused. And allow it to take you to a place of calm, and linked with that energy that we're building. Don't be afraid to let your breath be heard. Push the air through your vocal cords. That sound that we make, that humming in our throat, can help us to stay present in this moment. And it will lead to a deeper practice more focused practice. Let's open our eyes and take three breaths together. Bring your arms by your sides. Inhale, lift, reach the arms up to the sky. Feel that energy all around your body. Exhale, release. Let the hands drop down, shoulders drop down and head drop down as well. Inhale, building up the energy to expand through our center and torso. Exhale, release what you don't need. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Enjoy that connection. Let's come around to all fours and press ourselves up to Adha Mukha Svanasana or Downward Facing Dog. Heels drop down to the floor as we press back through our hips, up through the shoulders. If you need to pedal your feet, you can. I said heels on the floor, but I just meant they're reaching to the floor. Feel this first initial stretch and maybe determine what in the body you want to really work on today how we can heat it and lengthen it and stretch it, energize it. Let's look forward and walk up to our hands. Just let yourself hang here for a moment. 
You might soften your knees to kind of relax your back, relax the hamstrings, or you might keep the knees straight, which is going to stimulate the hamstrings. Let's roll up through our spine. This gentle build will just help us to work into that fire element of heat. And we'll begin with Sira Namaskara A. So alignment focused today, if you are classical with your, with your style, you would take your big toes together and your heels slightly apart. If that feels too intense to your body, then feet parallel, hip width distance apart is a little more gentle. Anywhere in between there is fine. Let's link our breath with our movement with Sula Namaskara A. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead to lengthen your torso. Exhale, swan dive forward, take it down as deep as you can go. You don't have to touch the floor, but you certainly can if you're able. Inhale, look up, halfway lift, shoulders roll back, neck extended. Exhale, hands down, step or hop back to a plank. Take chaturanga, elbows bend, see if you can hover here. Inhale, Urva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog to reach and open the chest. Exhale, roll back to Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Again in this pose, it might feel different this time around, maybe it feels just the same, but we'll keep going, see if we can make a change. Bend your knees, look forward, inhale, step or hop up to your hands. Exhale, fold down deeply into your legs. Inhale, reverse swan dive, reach up to the sky. Exhale, Samastiti. Good, let's build our tempo just a little bit so we can build that heat. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold down to the ground, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step where you can hop back if you'd like. Take Chaturanga. You take it as energetically as you want. Inhale, Urva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Here's where we pause, right? We take a moment to reconnect with that breath. We are building energy, building heat, but that rest, is just as important. We'll find that balance today. Bend your knees, look forward, inhale, step or hop up to the hands. Exhale, fold into the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, reverse swan dive, Urva Hastasana. Exhale, Samastiti. Let's do it one more time and we'll move on. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, float forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands down, step or hop back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Catch the breath, feel that energy again return and let's lift our right leg inhale up and back behind us three legged down dog exhale bring it forward in between your hands and drop the left heel down to the floor raise your arms up to warrior one virabhandrasana a this is a really strong stable pose but it's going to build the heat up the body it's working our major muscle groups so that we can really feel that connection to the whole body. Let's bring our hands to heart center and guide the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. So press into your leg there and pull the shoulder up to the sky. Feel free to stay here. You can open up your arms if you want to feel that, that deeper pull through the torso. Also, we can feel it twisting into the hips. 
the whole center spirals here. Good. Take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Place your hands down. You're already halfway there. And let's take a big step forward with our left foot to bring both toes together. Now we'll balance here. A little bit of a toe stand. This may seem like it's not very difficult. It might be difficult. You might have your hands on the floor, but not complicated, right? But look what's happening to the feet. Are they shifting around? Are your ankles slightly moving? The toes? All of those subtle movements are really helping us to get um, some connection to our balance and the strength in our ankles and feet. Very important. Good. Now, I'm gonna give you a choice on this next part. We'll do an arm balance, but if you don't love arm balances, we'll give a second option. So I'll start with that second option now. You can take your hands to the floor and just lower your knees. So you would be resting on your feet. This is a great stretch for the feet called fire toes to go with our fire theme. So if you want to be here, then hang out here. If you want to do the arm balance with me, I'll come to face a different way here. We'll, we'll start it from our toe stand. We'll bring our arms down to the right side of our body. So my left arm is going to connect to my right thigh. And then my right hand is just hanging out here. This elbow is free. Then see if you can lean forward, take your weight on your arms and let the feet float up. A twisted crow pose here. Really gonna stimulate the center of our body and build us strength and heat. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Come on down. Great job, whichever you chose. Let's all come together into a forward bend. Place the heels down and straighten out your knees. Deep Uttanasana. Reach behind, grab onto your legs somewhere and pull yourself forward. It feels nice to lengthen the backs of the legs here, calves, ankles. Now press into your hands, look up, inhale. Exhale, bring your hands to your waist. Inhale, lift up the rest of the way. Good job. Exhale, take the right foot forward again. We're sticking on our right side and step the left foot back. Heel to arch aligned for Trikonasana. Inhale, raise your arms. Exhale, take the right hand down to the shin, the ankle, or the toe. Here's where a block might help. Put it on the big toe side. You can reach for that block as you extend that arm up to the sky. Or even hand on the hip is just fine. So go as deep as you want, as far as you can. Right, we're more focused today on alignment than depth. So we wanna feel the openness of our chest and that reach of the shoulder. We wanna feel that length through the hip. We're not twisting our hip back or forward. Good. Now we're very strong and stable here, so let's move into a less stable pose. Bend your knee, look forward, perhaps you've got your block, reach for it, and let's lift up to a half moon pose. Now I like to have my hand directly below my shoulder. Make sure there's enough room for the length of your torso there. It will be much easier, not easy, but easier to hold the pose if you give your torso a, some room. Now, if you don't need the block, you don't need it, right? You can just have your hand on the floor, whatever works. Ooh, I gotta move mine, it was flipping around. <laughs> oh, working on our balance. One more breath. Inhale, exhale, bend your right knee, put your left foot down. We'll return to a stable position in warrior two, Virabhadrasana A. 
or B, sorry. Feel this hip, feel it. Feel connected to the floor. Inhale, exhale, Parsvakonasana. Drop your right hand down, take your left arm overhead. If you're using your block, pinky toe side of the foot, just gonna lift you a little bit more. And if that still feels too far down, try elbow to thigh. All good options, right? All good options. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful. Energize as you step up and take your feet back together. Let's return to our vinyasa so we can repeat all those on the other side. Here we go. Inhale, lift. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, look up, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step or hop back, chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha Swanasana. Exhale, Adha Mukha Swanasana. Take a breath, sigh it out if you need to. This is our little bit of rest, right? <laughs> Good, let's lift our right leg, sorry, left, left leg up and back behind you. <laughs> and bring it through in between the hands. Drop the right heel down, raise up, Virabhadrasana A. Now you can see why it's important to start with this strong, stable pose, feeling ourselves really connected to the floor, strong and straight and stable. Maybe open your arms if you want. Just a little chest opening on the second side. Good. And then bring your hands to heart center. Guide your elbow down to your legs. That's the right elbow moving to the left leg. Press against, open up the chest. Feel free to extend your arms if you want. Just a choice you can make. Feel that squeeze, that lifting up through the center of the body. Good. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your hands back down to the floor. We're already halfway there. And let's we'll step our feet together. Back to our toe stand balance again. Bring your hands to heart center. If that feels not secure enough, then our hands to the floor, and that's fine, right? That is fine. Good. Now, if you don't want to do the arm balance on this side, here's your, your alternative. Let's come all the way down onto our feet, the tops of our feet. So last time we stretched out the back of our foot and our toes, this time we're stretching our shins and the tops of the feet. So you'll just sit here in Varasana and enjoy that stretch for a moment. If you're doing the arm balance with me, we'll bring our arms to the left side of our body. So my uh, right hand is connected to the left thigh and then the left arm is out here hanging out. Then start to lean forward and maybe catch yourself. Arms in a chaturanga, a stance, really nice shelf. One more breath, inhale, exhale, come down, nicely done. Let's all join together into our forward bend, Uttanasana. Reach forward, grab on behind you and pull toward you. Lengthen it out. Massage those internal organs with our deep bend. Good. Take your hands to your shins. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bring your hands to your waist. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, release. Good. Continuing on our left side. Left foot forward, right foot back. Heel to arch aligned. Inhale, lift your arms, 
exhale, fold forward. Back into our trikonasana, feel free to reach for your block. It will go on the pinky toe side of your foot. Be more focused on the alignment than on the quantity, quality over quantity, right? We just enjoy that challenge for the sake of the challenge, not to try to be better than anyone else or do more than we have capacity to do. Let's try that balance. Look down, bend your left knee, take your left hand forward. Perhaps you're using your block. I'm gonna change mine again and lift it up to our half moon pose. Give that space for your entire torso. So don't bring your hand too close to your foot. Give yourself space there. It'll make the pose a little bit more doable. Good. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your left knee. Put your right foot down. Lift up to Virabhadrasana B. Stable, supported position. Open through the hips. Feels so nice and take our journey deeper. Maybe hand to the thigh. Maybe you're going for your block again. It's on the pinky toe side, or the hand is all the way on the ground. The right arm reaches overhead and feel that strong, strong situation. Good. Keep breathing. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Let's go deeper. Hands down to the mat this time. Step your way back. We'll move right into our vinyasa chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha Swanasana. Exhale, roll back to Adha Mukha Swanasana. Heels drop down, hips lengthen. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale, come to child's pose. Knees open, hips drop back, arms reach forward. Child's pose. Good. Having internal fire and focus doesn't mean going without rest. You have to ha have the energy and determination you want in order to have that. You have to resolve to have self-care, space for renewal, and respite throughout. So let's take a few breaths here. <clears throat> Last breath, inhale, exhale. Good. Gently lift up and have, have a seat on your mat. Now we're going to see how much length we can get out of our torso. So grab your strap. I think when we are twisting and stimulating the center of our body, our abdominals, our sides, we also need to have that balance of lengthening them. So let's see what we can do today. We'll start with Paschimottanasana. Take your strap if you're using it around your toes and sit nice and tall. Inhale, pull in through Uddiyana Bandha, that navel lock. Exhale, walk your way forward for the feet. Now, if you can grab your toes, you don't need your strap, so you can just set it off to the side. But if not, just work your way down that strap, yeah? Take a deep breath, inhale, pull in through your middle. Exhale, fold back down. Relax into it as best as you can. It's important to keep the knees lengthened here. That will give you the hamstring stretch that you, your body craves. Take one more breath, inhale. Exhale, gently lift up, nicely done. 
We'll set this off to the side. We'll just keep it close. And let's hurdle back our right leg. So right leg hurdles and the left leg bent in front for a nice open chested twist. Now you can keep it just like this or you can take your right foot, I'm sorry, left foot up onto the hip. That might feel nice as well. A little bit of a bind. Then our right arm reaches across, place it underneath the knee or just grab that knee. Left hand to the floor or you might be able to wrap your left arm or behind your back and grab your toe and just spiral that left shoulder back, your gaze back as well, and feel that twist. So we're binding our arms potentially, but we're open through the entire chest. So lots of length, lots of renewal for the breath. One more breath, inhale, Exhale, good job, let's come out of it. If your foot is up on your hip, put it back down. And this right leg, extend it out to the side. So left leg bent, right leg straight. Take your right arm over to that right side. If you can grab your toe, great, your foot, great. Or just grab your leg somewhere, hang on somewhere. And let's reach our left arm up and over. And if it is in your practice, in your body, to reach your toe, where's my toe? Then you can. But if not, don't worry about it. Either way, you should get a really nice side bend all the way through that side of the body. Good. Feel that pull way down deep through the edge of the hip, all the way across the rib cage. Nice job. Inhale, lift up, good for you. Exhale, open up. Now both legs are extended. Keep your toes pointed to the sky. Take a breath, inhale, exhale, fold forward. Upavista Konasana. So we're gonna walk our way down and try to keep those toes pointed to the sky. Don't let them fall forward because then you're gonna lose that internal rotation that we're working on, opening up that space. Get as deep as you can and then just hold there and breathe. Maybe you can go a little bit deeper. Sometimes we can. See what happens as you work with your breath. Good, almost there, one more breath. Inhale, exhale. Excellent, walk it back up. Woo, link through the torso, yes. Let's bend our right knee now. We've already got our left leg straight, so we'll keep it there. Take your left hand down, you can grab onto your foot if that's for you, or just along the side of your body somewhere. And let's extend that right arm over. Maybe you can grab your toe, maybe you can't. That's not what's the most important thing. We are trying to get depth, sure, sure we are. But we work with our body. We work with our breath. Do what you can and just enjoy the journey. Good, lift up, nicely done. We should feel so much longer. Let's hurdle back our right leg now. I'm sorry, left leg. Right leg is already bent. <laughs> you could place this right foot up on your hip if you're doing the bind like we did last time. Take your left arm across, grab onto that knee. Right arm is behind us or we're reaching back to see if we can connect to the toes. Send your gaze back behind and feel this rotation of the entire spine, but how open we are, really making room for the center of the body where we've stoked our internal fire.
Good job. Take one more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Go ahead and come out. Let's lengthen our legs again. I'm going to turn to my side so you can see. Our legs have been bent for a while, so it'll feel good to lengthen them out. And we're going to get onto our back into a reverse forward bend. So we can notice the physical challenges in these next poses that we're going to be going through. And we have to have some mental and some spiritual determination to be in them fully present to give yourself the full effort that they need. So let's see what we can achieve here. Start by just extending the legs up to the sky. So I would place my hands under my hips here and this may be where you stay and that's great. This may be good for today. So feel free to stay here. If you feel like going deeper and then exploring that challenge, then take your legs overhead and bring the toes to the floor overhead. <coughs> Sorry, it always makes me cough right at first. <laughs> I think I got it out of my system. So this is Halasana, a reverse forward bend. Definitely going to stimulate that fire in our center because we're squeezing our torso. So all of that length that we just did, now we're squishing. <laughs> it's a little bit of balance, of course. Got to breathe a little bit deeper, a little bit stronger here. Let your breath rise to the occasion. Now take your hands to your back and let's lift up to the sky into shoulder stand. Now some of you may be able to reach to shoulder stand from that very first position and you are welcome to join at any point here. We're trying to take the bend out of the waist so stimulate our body to get higher and higher. I like to walk my hands up my back. This pose is great for stimulation, for circulation, because we are flipping our body upside down and it brings blood flow down into our vital organs, our stomach, our chest, our throat, in our head. Good. Take one more breath right here. Inhale. Exhale. Start to roll yourself down. Good job. Let's lay our legs on the mat. Arms by our sides. Lift onto your elbows. Arch your back. And take the top of the head to the floor. So this now flushes our chest, flushes our throat really opens up that respiratory system again. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, then you can lift your legs. That will engage the abdominals. You can also take your hands away and press them together. Take one more breath here. Inhale. Exhale, come on down. Good work, good work. Woo. Reach down, grab the arches of your feet. Open up your hips a little bit wider and let's just rock into a happy baby. This is our rest, right? After that exertion, that good work, good strong work. Now we get to rock it out. <laughs> rest it. <sighs> Sigh it out if you want. There's a lot of good heat going on here today. Excellent. Pull your knees into your chest and then drop the feet to the floor. We're going to take two bridge poses. I'll offer two different options and you can decide which one you want to do each time. So first, just a standard bridge, Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. Make sure the curve of your spine is connected to the floor, so lengthen out that torso. Tilt your pelvis a little bit and drop the hips back down. 
Now from the base of the spine, start to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Take your hands underneath, clasp them together, press into the floor, lift up through those hips, feel that stretch through the front of the body while we're stimulating our back body. Such a good balance. Take one more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Release the hands. Roll on down. Good. Now you can repeat that one again, or you can move with me into a wheel pose or Urdhva Dhanurasana. So for that one, we would take our hands back behind us, fingertips facing the shoulder blades, and then press into the hands and push up. So if this is not for you, don't do it. Just go back to that bridge pose. But if you enjoy it, then enjoy it with me. Good. Feel that deep stretch through the entire front of the body. Such a good sensation. We'll take one more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Come on down, tilt your head so you're tucking your chin to protect the neck as you go down, and then pull your knees into your chest. Oh, let's just sigh it out. Good, strong work. That was really great, everybody. Now we're coming toward the ultimate rest. You've worked hard, you've built up that fire, and we're going to enjoy our rest. Let's gently relax our legs down. One leg to each edge of the mat so they're gently opening up our legs, our hips, and take your arms, palms up, resting on the floor. I will leave you to rest here, but before you completely surrender, <laughs> just notice or think to yourself, I'm going to arrive here most fully, most present. Let every part of your body vibrate with energy and aliveness as you rest, renewed in your capabilities. Enjoy your rest. I will wake you up with the sound of a bell when it's time to arise.
start to wake yourself up. Rotate through your wrists and your ankles. Point and flex your feet. Stretch your arms overhead to lengthen through your entire body. And roll yourself onto one side in fetal pose. Gently press up to a comfortable seated position and bring your hands to heart center. We'll finish with a quote from the Bhagavad Gita. The wise man, man lets go of all results, whether good or bad, and is focused on the action alone. Yoga is skill in action. Thank you for joining me for this Pitta Balancing Yoga class. Namaste.